amid tensions emanating from the uncertainties surrounding the Niger coup d'etat, which saw President Mohamed Bazoum deposed by the military, and a warning from... At Demodibo Keita International Airport in Bamako, Malian authorities receive a new delivery of several warplanes and helicopters from Russia, its new major military and political ally. Ten aircraft were counted on ground and in the air, eight planes and two helicopters during the second. A Russian cargo plane delivered helicopters, weapons and ammunition from Russia to Mali on Thursday. Mali has publicized the arrival of new military equipment from Russia. Sharing videos on social media, military officials showed and commented the delivery of two combat helicopters and civilian radars sent by Moscow, praising it as a sign of fruitful partnership between the two nations. It also came after foreign leaders and particularly the Russian president Vladimir Putin cautioned ECOWAS, or rather Nigeria, against pushing to invade Niger in an attempt to overturn the coup d'etat and restore President Mohamed Bazoum's presidency. Good day, viewers. Nigeria and ECOWAS are being motivated by the Western countries to go ahead that they got their back. They motivated them to go ahead and carry out military actions in Niger. The same Western countries that pushed Ukraine into Russia's confrontation and later they abandoned Ukraine to their destiny. Now the scramble for Africa has begun again. Well, for about three days now, the Nigerian government and the ECOWAS have received a lot of pressure from media because we have made our voice so loud to make sure that Nigeria did not carry out military actions in Niger because they don't have any reason to do so. As well as ECOWAS, we urge them to back off. And it happens yesterday when the Nigerian government sent delegation to the Niger Republic to negotiate with the Juntas, to negotiate with these soldiers. Let us talk diplomatically. But that is not enough. It seems that Nigeria are still receiving pressure for them not to negotiate diplomatically. Yes, the presence of military is now close to the Niger border in Sokoto State in northern Nigeria. And the ECOWAS and the Nigerian government has said it again yesterday that next tomorrow that they are going to carry out this military action. But the question is this. Does Nigeria have the military capacity to match the powers of the sponsors of these soldiers. Now, I'm not talking about their government. The Guinea, the Burkina Faso, the Mandi, and the Niger. These four countries, maybe with other Francophone countries who are supporting them, these countries might not be able to match Nigeria's military power. But something is going on, and a lot of ammunition, aircraft have been sent to the West Africa, Mandi precisely, for this same reason, to back the military coup regime in Niger. So if Nigeria want to enter into this fight, are they sure that they have weapons to match the military power of the sponsors of this coup? The truth is this, the new Africa has come. Revolution has beginning to happen. And I am not seeing this revolution stopping soon because the question a lot of people have been asking has remained unanswered. The questions like why are Africans so poor? When we have mineral resources that are supposed to make us the richest continent, why are the citizens of Africans so poor? Why is it that the political leaders, they don't do things that will benefit the masses? So this is a political and leadership problem that has remained unanswered for decades in Africa. I think the answer is to kick these people out of power. And that is what is beginning to happen. And the only way to do that is through military coup. And when you look at the political powers that has been suppressing Africa, it's being backed by either Great Britain or France. These colonizers, they don't care about the poor masses. They care about the purpose why they first came to Africa to take our mineral resources. So after that, they don't care about what happens in the country. And that is why on the other way around, people are turning to Russia. Russia who is ready to cancel them, support them to do the right thing. And they call Russia now their brothers. So this is the situation we're having in Africa. In just a matter of months, four African countries have had coups that have seen the ousting of their leaders. Plus and Africa in the fight against Nazism has been forgotten, but today we stand together and today we're here to talk about the future of our countries. 
And what will happen tomorrow in this new free world to which we aspire for, where there will be no meddling in our domestic affairs, we have shared prospects and I hope that this summit will provide an opportunity to establish just peace and just world order and relations between our peoples. It's not quite clear to me how come that Africa that has so many resources, water, solar energy, how come that currently it is the poorest continent in the world with the highest levels of famine, how come that we have to ask for help? We ask ourselves, but we don't get any answers. We have a chance to build new relationship. Hopefully, this relationship will be for the better to us in order to build a better future for our country. On behalf of my generation, I would like to say that due to poverty, Many had to cross oceans in quest for a better life. At times, they die. At times, they starve. It's hard for them to survive. As for Burkina Faso, it's been eight years since we have been facing the most barbaric and violent form of uh, colonialism, barbarism, we are imposed this modern form of slavery. We were taught one thing. A slave that cannot rebel does not deserve pity. And we decided to fight, to fight against terrorists that impede our development and our struggle. Our people decided to take up arms in order to fight terrorism. We are surprised that imperialists are deceived. Uh, they are called uh, militarized units. Militarized groups. In Europe, people take arms in order to defend their motherland. They, are called that they, are said, they say that they are not patriots, but when my grandfather had to take up arms, it was against his will. When people decide to take up arms, there's another problem. The problem is that the heads of African states do not give anything to these people who fight against imperialism. They are calling us armed units, bandits. We do not agree with such an approach. Leaders of African states should not be puppets when imperialists treat them like that. I would like to convey a message to heads of African states. We need to ensure self-sufficiency of our peoples, of our countries. We need to ensure food self-sufficiency and we need to meet all the needs of our peoples. But I would like to end by saying that we need to pay homage to our people. Since there is not much time left for my intervention, let me pay tribute to our peoples that fight against all the evil, glory to our people, respect to our people, and victory to our people. Thank you. President Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso has met a delegation from Niger as the military junta seeks support from its allies to protect itself from a military intervention. On August 2, 2023, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, who is a transitional president of Burkina Faso, received a delegation from the National Council for the Protection of Homeland of Niger that was headed by the Corps General Salafu Modi in Ouagadougou. As announced by the Communications Directorate of the Burkina Faso Presidency, 
the exchange with Traoré saw the delegation assure the world that the situation in Niger is calm and under control. That however, there are some concerns especially over warnings from ECOWAS and in their meeting, they talked about Burkina Faso supporting Niger, and that Ouagadougou pledged to rally behind Niger's military junta all the way. That, Salafu Modi criticized the severe sanctions imposed on Niger by ECOWAS and its allies, but what was of great importance to talk about was the matter of a military intervention that ECOWAS had warned about. That, regarding the military intervention, Traoré and the delegation pledged to do all it takes to... Yes, this is a revolutionary move by this 34 years old president of Burkina Faso. I think more people are to come after these guys, more people are to take these guys' says Maybe that is why the West and the Echo West Nigeria, they are now serious because they see that one after the other, every country is now chasing the colonial system out of their country and embracing their culture. And without we finding our culture, without we embracing our culture, there is no how we can break through and become a better continent. Thank you for having time to listen to this video.